Meanwhile, an alliance of three well-armed militias of ethnic minorities is waging a major offensive against Myanmar's military-run government. Well, the coordinated offensive in the northeast has inspired resistance forces around the country to attack and Myanmar's military is falling back on almost every front. Myanmar's junta chief has called on ethnic armed groups battling the military across the country to find a solution soon. The army says it is regrouping and will regain the initiative. Hope is also rising among the opponents that this could be a turning point in the struggle to oust the army leaders who toppled Aung San Suu Kyi's government almost three years ago. The military, known as the Tatma Duo, remains far bigger and better trained than the resistance forces and has armor, air power and even naval assets. The troops are surrendering and defecting, giving, giving the rise, further giving rise to optimism among its diverse opponents. As for the reports, the Hunta chief warned that if armed organizations keep on being foolish, the residents of the relevant regions will suffer badly. So, and I'm quoting here, it is extremely essential to consider the lives of the people and organizations that need to solve their problems politically. Myanmar has more than a dozen ethnic minority armed groups. Many of them hold territory in the country's border regions and have battled the military since independence from Britain in 1948. Well, according to the United Nations field reports, over 250 civilians, including children, are feared to have died since the launch of the offensive in October. The UN said that over 500,000 people have been displaced across the country.